This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey guys, I'm Mikko. In this video, I wanna show how I made this illustration. I wanna share some of the tips that I have learned along the way. And also, if you're here just for my free brush settings, I'm gonna put a timestamp here, so you can skip to that part. But this whole project is really more than just using a single brush. So you might want to sit through the entire video because there are a lot of different workflows that can make this process a lot faster. And speed is a huge thing when creating a project like this. Because if you do things the slow way, you can end up spending at least two or four times longer than is necessary to create an illustration like this. So I'm sure that some of you skipped to the brush settings, but let me assure you that the line art brush you use is nowhere as important as this first phase in this whole project. I plug in the main shapes in color. This isn't the right nor the only way to do a plug-in. For most of you, doing a rough sketch as a drawing first might feel easier. This is just to plan where all the big shapes go. I use color with big brush because no matter what approach you have for this planning phase, the most important part here is to be extremely fast. The speed isn't important to get the sketch done quickly, but having this speedy momentum to this part of the project is essential so you don't accidentally get stuck in rendering small details. Usually we tell ourselves that we're working really hard when we're adding details, but those are always the easiest part, and therefore the most rewarding part. And that's why it's super easy to get stuck on rendering when the beginning part should be spent on planning. Planning is just as much about throwing things away. If you're working an entire hour on a house element in this part of the project, for example, it will create this bond between you and the detailed, carefully rendered object. Try to avoid this emotional attachment by having everything be replaceable and not too precious. Basically, if you work fast, it will not look pretty, but because it doesn't look pretty, it's easy to get rid of. Try to keep the eye on the prize, which is the big picture in this case. And trust me, you will thank yourself later for having this sort of restraint in this phase. One of the reasons why I wanted to block in with color is because this illustration isn't really based on value contrasts at all. Now I know this will probably trigger some people on the internet who prefer to color grayscale images, but not all art has to be based on value contrasts. For this piece, I want the colors to have a bit more hue contrast than usual, so I'm going to fill all the surfaces with flat colors to create this cell shaded look. It's not really inspired by animation movies that have cell shaded characters and moving elements, but this is more something that I remember from my childhood. Back then, big AAA video games had very different concept art, and it wasn't as dark and gritty, and there wasn't this weird blend between promotional art and concept art. The designs I saw in game magazines were honestly just meant for production design, and as such, the way that they were made, it was a bit more carefree than what you mostly see these days in media. I also love the worlds those older video games had when pretty much everything was designed from scratch to build on a world for one game. And I guess my art is just a way for me to relive those days again and that kind of childlike discovery. By the way, I'm not saying that games aren't imaginative these days. Just recently, during the Nintendo Wii era, for example, we got Xenoblade Chronicles, and I definitely think it has all those qualities and I love that game for it. I think it's a visual masterpiece. Once I have the main elements in place and I have figured out for myself what is the visual hook of this piece, then I can finally start the drawing process. This might also be different for you depending on what works for you. I used to make several rough sketches instead of just one. The intent was to slowly progress to the final artwork while keeping the feeling of drawing less scary for myself. If you feel like it's a bit too much to go straight into inking, then feel free to do less rough sketch in between these phases and then just gradually get towards the finished way of drawing. 
Considering how long it took me to draw everything in this piece, I just don't work that way anymore. It would have pretty much doubled the time to create this entire place if there was an additional rough sketch between the blocking phase and the final drawing. But if you feel like that helps, that's an option. For drawing, I set the perspective guides in Procreate before I start drawing, and then I make two layers for line art. In the sketching and blocking phase, I just use the vanishing points as a visual reference for perspective. It's important to note here that I use the drawing assist only when going into actual drawing mode, because it would seriously slow me down in the blocking part of this process. Even in the drawing mode, when I'm doing the final line art, I need to be mindful of how toggling this setting takes up valuable seconds. It might be just like 3 seconds to put the drawing assist on, but that time really adds up when you have this much stuff to draw. That's why I have two layers for line art at all times. One of the layers has drawing assist on, which allows me to make all the straight lines that align with my vanishing points quickly. This way I don't have to wait around for the quick shape tool to kick in when I'm making straight lines. The other layer is for drawing all the other shapes and lines that don't align with those vanishing points, like for example all the organic shapes in this drawing. Now just a quick word about the perspective. I have only two vanishing points in this piece. It's not something that's based on realism, as in this very large field of view, you would see things getting smaller in the lower parts of the image, but it's purely a stylistic choice here to keep the feeling of this piece more cozy and intimate instead of epic and massive. You can probably tell by now that I really hate the word epic for some reason. I just feel like epic is one of those words that it doesn't convey a mood or a story, and I've been asked to do epic stuff for so many projects where that word is just a placeholder for an actual mood or a story or what they want to tell to their audience and then they have this word epic there and it's just a huge red flag for miscommunication or just a project that is kind of like emotionally empty and that's why I have kind of formed this relationship with the word that it just means that the project is not going well if everybody is saying epic all the time. Anyway, if your company wants to order an epic illustration, then I'm probably not the right guy for that job. I'm sorry. Back to the topic at hand. Perspective is not just a tool to convey a sense of three-dimensionality, but it's also a tool for storytelling. I already made a whole video on this topic in my Beginner to Advanced series. That's for my channel members, and also this month all the brushes that I made for this project are downloadable for the members of this channel for a limited time. But since they are available only for a limited time, I won't go into the contents of that set in this video, but feel free to ask me in the comments below and I'll do my best to help. One thing that I knew from the beginning is that I wanted this line art to be a big decorative part of the whole illustration. I didn't want those lines to be so thin that they couldn't be seen in an Instagram post when somebody views it on their phone. I have previously used my chunky line art brush for drawings that have big visible lines. However, I knew that in this scene there's going to be so many different elements that my chunky line art brush would just be too thick for this, because there wouldn't be enough space in between the lines to convey what the local colors of those surfaces are. I also wanted to have a brush that would allow for small size and opacity variety. This is just based on my own personal preferences, but that small variety that comes from pressure applied to the stylus, it allows the lines to look a bit more organic. When going over the same part twice, it can also be used to play with line weight, but in a way that doesn't take over the space between lines when used in a big illustration like this. Because this brush has no grain, and the source is a big round shape, I thought I could share the settings for this brush with all of you, so that if you want to use this brush, you can easily make an exact copy of this brush by just copying these settings yourself. All you need to do is just duplicate the default round brush, go into the brush studio, and I'm going to show all the tabs of the brush studio, so you can match these parameters to that brush. Just remember to save the brush before you're done. 
Now these are going by quite quickly, but you can just pause the video and check that all the brush settings are the same in each one of these tabs. And that is the entire brush. You don't need to do anything else. That is the exact copy of the brush that I am using. When adding the details, I constantly kept in mind my end goal with this whole piece, which was to add a lot of artificial lights that glow and bloom over these thin elements, such as cords, bridges and beams. Those light leaks would have to be extremely saturated, so this defined my entire process in two fundamental ways. First of all, all the light elements needed to be positioned to the camera in a way that would allow for this type of overlap to happen. The other part, which is much harder, and it is just trusting that the editing that I was going to do in Photoshop in the end would bring those bright saturated glows into this piece. But to get there, I needed to stay in the muted colors for the entire time I was filling these areas with flat color. This is technically easy to do, but mentally it requires just a whole lot of restraint because the entire visual appeal that I was betting on would only become visible to me at the very last part of the illustration. So when I'm filling these colors, I don't get that sense of reward yet, but I know that it's coming, so I just have to keep patient and that was the hard part. So there were just many moments of, oh my god, this is taking so much time and I have no idea if this is even going to work at all. Honestly, if this was my first time doing this, I might not have had the blind confidence that the editor Mikko will somehow pull the bits together in the end. But uh, luckily, this is not my first time of doing an illustration like this, so I kind of trusted myself that the end part will be fun, and I'm glad that I did. If I had decided to do this entire illustration to completion in Procreate, it would have affected my process in one main way. I would have kept all the lights on their own layers. That would have made all the glows much faster to do. But since I knew that I will do all the editing in Photoshop, that allowed me to keep the resolution high, and I slapped all the flat colors on the same layer. Layer separation wasn't really ever an issue because all of the color adjustments that I did, I used the select by color in Photoshop and that allowed me to adjust and tweak all the hues of one color at once. So I just didn't need to have them on separate layers to select them. Once all of the elements were done, I exported the file as a PSD and opened it on my PC. I made this stream of different particles first and I made it so many different times and I kept thinking that it would be cool if I could animate this sort of stuff someday. I found this class on Skillshare that is for After Effects and it has seriously lowered my fear of that program. It's called Animating with Ease in After Effects by Jake Bartlett. I never really fully understood how the Easy Ease curves correlate to the type of motion I want to have, but this class does a great job of visually showing how to use anchor points for smooth motion. Pretty much all of my videos already have motion graphics using these tools, so it was about time for me to hone this skill anyway and understand what it is that I'm doing. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Most classes are under 60 minutes, with short lessons to fit any schedule. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership, so you can explore your creativity. I just love tweaking the colors. After what seemed like forever of just manual labor, getting to this part was like drinking all of the sugary coffee at the bottom of the cup. I got to make things glow and sparkle without thinking if it's too much or apologizing for liking this sort of stuff. It might seem like I've repeated over and over how much work this is, but let me assure you that getting to this editing part for me 
absolutely makes it all worth it. I just love that part so much. I love adjusting the colors back and forth and trying all kinds of different ways to tweak the hues. For example, I made those stars three different times and I kept in the final piece variants from all of those different iterations. This whole process is a lot of work, but that kind of tinkering is my comfort zone because it's so magical when you have enough information to trick your brain into thinking that the space that you have created is real and it's like opening this whole portal to a new place. Kind of like those 90s video games that I played as a kid, finally becoming a real place that I also get to show to other people as well and sort of share this excitement that I have for this sort of like childlike adventure. I can only hope that somebody out there can feel the same way about these sort of illustrations, but honestly, it's just enough that I love the process of making it so much. And I think that part is important to remember. And I hope that part is something that you can find as well in your own art. Because the only thing that is common in all of your artwork that you create is that you were there when you made them. So make that time enjoyable to yourself and that will keep you on the path of making more art and getting better at art. But more importantly, it will create the kind of work that you enjoy making. So don't wait for likes or other people to appreciate your work, because at that point you have already missed the experience if you didn't enjoy it back when you were making that piece. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more of my stuff you can click on this video or this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!